Tailored Vision Productions presents Doctor Who Short Trips The Children of Earl King by Lewis Leverett Read by Miles Taylor Aeroscobing! The doctor threw both of his arms into the air with a youthful glee. As happy snow fell gently from the sky and rested itself on the glistening grass beneath him. Sorry? Lily replied with little emotion. She was getting rather used to the doctor's unrelenting gibberish. It was almost charming. Aeroscobing! exclaimed the doctor once more, oblivious to Lily's confusion as he took in the sights. It was a modest little place, Lily noted, wherever they were. The TARDIS had found a nice little field to park itself on, and there had been no one around to see its inexplicable apparition. A small forest kindly offered shade to the grass behind the brilliant blue box. The sun showed off the fantastic white sheet that coated the forest, the grass, and everything in sight. In the other direction, a quaint town sat on the lush green land, neither warning visitors away, nor inviting them in. "'You're talking gibberish again,' answered Lily, growing ever so slightly impatient in spite of her usual two-thumbs-up attitude." No, I'm not, the doctor insisted, almost insulted. Eroskubing is where we are. The town of Eroskubing on the island of Echo, in the country of Denmark, on the planet Earth, in the year 1661. December the 24th, to be precise. Christmas Eve? Lily energetically inquired. Christmas Eve, the doctor concluded, passing a warm smile to his companion as he caught snowflakes in his hands. Brilliant! I've always loved Christmas, Lily declared. Really? I wasn't sure you'd know what it was, let alone celebrate it, replied the Doctor. Oh yeah, it's very traditional too, or at least I think it is. Christmas meal, Christmas crackers, alcohol, you know, all the classics, Lily explained. Yeah, very traditional, the Doctor agreed. Humans have never liked change. Well, I'm afraid a 17th century Danish Christmas won't be exactly like the ones you're used to, but it'll be pretty close. No tree, no turkey, but other than that, it's Christmas as you know it. I see. And if you don't mind me asking... Why have you brought us here in particular? Lily asked. Because it's nice. Or so I've been told. Certainly seems it from here. The doctor shot an affable grin Lily's way. Nice. I didn't think you did nice, Lily responded. I thought you did murder robots and Al Capone. Her words were playful, but her tone was quite sincere. Yes, well, a person can do and enjoy a many number of things, the doctor affirmed. A Time Lord especially so. After all, we've got plenty of time to kill. Après vous, Miss Wright. The Doctor and Lily made their way down a cold, cobbled road, the Doctor two strides ahead of his companion. I don't mean to sound ungrateful, Doctor, but it's not very busy, is it? Lily's enthusiasm was beginning to ebb away. Well, it's a small town. Maybe we've come in a quiet hour. Besides, there's nothing wrong with quiet every so often. The Doctor spoke with confidence and dismissal, determined to make this a good trip. A nice trip. I don't know. There's quiet and then there's this, replied Lily, with unusual scepticism. There was something off about this quaint little town. What's gotten you so cynical all of a sudden? The doctor inquired, a hint of frustration in his voice. I thought you were all wide-eyed about adventure. Well, a person could do a many number of things, Lily retorted. She leaned her head playfully as she looked over at the doctor, who replied with a sarcastic smile. I mean, just listen, Lily politely commanded, holding out an arm to halt the doctor's confident walk. Nothing. Complete and utter silence she stated, hammering home her point. Well, that is strange, said the doctor, fumbling through his many pockets. Freaky is what it is, Lily corrected. 
She wasn't sure what had gotten her into this state of pessimism. Surely it wasn't just the silence. Whatever the reason, she wanted out. That she was sure of. Have you noticed something else? The doctor inquired. What? Lily hastily asked. She wasn't sure she wanted to hear the answer. There's no snow. The doctor was right. Lily looked up at the sky. It had stopped snowing. That wasn't strange, though. Of course snow can stop falling, she thought. She'd seen snow before. Not quite like this snow, but snow nonetheless. What was strange, she noted, as she looked down at her feet for the first time since she had entered the town, was that the ground was dry. Not one solitary snowflake in sight. How did I not notice that? Lily wondered, astonished. It still, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong here. They've probably just cleared the roads, the doctor postulated. Unconvinced, Lily turned her head and scanned the path they'd taken. In the distance, she saw snow and ice and the unrelenting sun. Where she stood, there was none of those things. It was as if a line had been drawn around the town, a line that struck fear into the hearts of the clouds themselves. Well, they've done a very good job of it, Lily remarked. She rubbed the back of her neck. It won't work. The sonic won't work. The doctor was astonished. Nothing. Nothing at all. But Lily's attention was already taken. She'd noticed something far more disconcerting. Something in the windows. Doctor. She tapped him on the shoulder until he turned around. The doctor replied with a preoccupied, Hmm? Lily pointed at the windows with precision, and the doctor noticed it at once. They were watching. Every single window in every single house. A mother, or a father, or a little old lady, stood and stared. This was no idle nosiness. They were staring right at them, assessing their every motion with piercing eyes. And what was that in their faces, the doctor silently wondered? Fear? Anger? Dread? They were not wanted. The two travellers swivelled with urgency to face an opening door, as a weathered old man stepped out of the shadows cast by the sturdy little houses that lined the street. Hello, the doctor tentatively began. I'm the doctor, and this is Lily. You're not welcome here, stranger, the man replied in a gruff, tired voice. His accent was undeniably Scandinavian, though he spoke perfect English. So much for Christmas spirit, Lily thought as she buried her cold hands in her pockets. She decided against saying this out loud, though. This didn't seem a good moment for jokes. Is there something wrong? We could help, the doctor insisted. Get out of here. You won't get another warning. There was no suggestion of insincerity in the man's voice. He meant what he said, and both Lily and the doctor sensed this. The doctor rubbed his thumb against his forefinger in concentration. All three of them stood unmoved, deadlock. Okay, chirped the doctor, breaking the silence suddenly. Wait, really? Lily inquired. She hadn't been travelling with the doctor for long, but Lily knew already that this was very unlike the enigmatic traveller. Yeah, the doctor smiled. Come on then, Lily, off we go. Sorry if we disturbed you. Bye-bye. Lily made no attempt to mask her confusion as she caught up with the doctor. Uh, hang on a minute, we're not actually leaving, are we? She muttered under her breath. Of course. Seems to me like these people just want some peace and quiet and I don't see why they shouldn't get their wish, the doctor enthusiastically explained. Lily was unsure how to respond. On the one hand, there were much better places to be than here, but on the other, well, something was off. Perhaps they could, and should, help. Regardless, as they found themselves on the icy fields once more, she couldn't help but feel relieved. Well, I'm sure wherever we end up next... It'll be a lot better place than this, she remarked. Hey, don't knock the tour guide. Not my fault the reviews are misleading. It was a lovely place by all accounts. And so much history too. Do you know, some of the houses we just walked past still exist more than 500 years later. Some make it to a thousand. And just over 30 years ago, half that place was burnt to a cinder. And yet, there it is, still standing. Some call this place the fairy tale town of Denmark. No one cared to mention the insular locals. The doctor spotted his reliable vessel in the distance as he finished his defence. It's a pity. Where to next then, Doctor? Lily asked, with renewed enthusiasm. Where to next? You know, Lily, sometimes I forget how new you are to all this. We're not going anywhere, replied the doctor, a boyish smile stretching across his face. 
But, but you just... Lily began, flummoxed, before she was interrupted. Yes, well, there's a very simple answer to all that, he cheerfully responded. Which is... Lily asked, stopping for a moment's rest. The doctor stopped also, placing a hand on each of Miss Wright's shoulders, and leaning until their eyes were perfectly level. He paused for a moment, opened his mouth slowly, and said, I lie. The doctor fiddled frantically with the TARDIS controls. The console glowed its warm, fantastic colours, and the time rotor inhaled and exhaled in its usual grandiose motion, right in the centre of it all. All right, now I'm lost again, Lily began. I thought we were staying here. We are staying here, just not now, replied the doctor. Lily wasn't sure if he was trying to be mysterious, or if he genuinely thought that that was a good explanation. It was probably the latter, she thought, and chuckled to herself ever so slightly. The doctor didn't notice. Here we are, exactly where we were. The doctor opened the TARDIS doors tentatively. But ten hours later. Ugh, it's a bit chilly. Freezing might be a better word, actually, remarked Lily. You can't stop moaning today, can you? The doctor barked back. Sorry, I'm not normally like this. It's just this place. I don't know. I can't put my finger on it, but... Wait, why have we jumped forward ten hours anyway? Lily, perhaps subconsciously, distracted herself from the uneasy thoughts with yet another question. Because no one can see you in the dark. What better time to snoop around? The doctor remarked. A mischievous smile appeared on his face, spotlighted by the glow from the TARDIS. And Lily smiled back. What exactly are we looking for? Lily whispered, adjusting the strange metal pod which the doctor had put in her ear a few minutes ago. She'd been told it was part of a lighting device she was carrying, some sort of electronic torch whose light could only be seen by whoever was wearing the earpiece. At least, that's what she'd gathered from his rapid onslaught of Technobabble. They certainly didn't have these back on Terra Delta. Trouble, Lily. We're looking for trouble. Makes a nice change. It normally finds me. The doctor hadn't noticed, as he waved his light gadget feverishly around the place, but Lily had begun to take a different path, towards what appeared from a distance to be a small collection of stones, laid out ceremoniously on a patch of damp, untouched grass. And then, she realised what they were. As she approached, she studied them for a moment, before stepping back out of horror. Doctor, Lily whispered, alarmed and struggling not to shout. The doctor pointed his torch in her direction as he made his way over. A graveyard? Oh, it's a bit big, isn't it? The doctor muttered, raising his voice a little as he moved further from the houses. No, Lily replied, her every fibre distraught. Read the stones. The doctor brought his attention to those at his feet. The first one was old, he noticed, but the next one was untouched, unspoilt. As was the next and the next, and the next, and the whole row, the whole row, but one, were brand new. But that wasn't the worst part, that wasn't what had shaken poor Lily to her very core. The doctor began to read them. Tobias Erickson, born 1652, died 1661. Ernie Nielsen, born 1651, died 1661. Edwin Poulsen, 1661. Dorit Poulsen, 1661. Gunhild Loon, Hemming Pedersen, Per Mortensen, 1661. They all died the same year. This year. And they were all... children. Lily, said the doctor, finally noticing his companion's devastated expression. Horrible. Lily feebly replied. That's... horrible. Yes, it is. The question is, what happened to them? It doesn't matter. It's too late now. They're gone. The doctor's eyes widened. Does it matter? He spat, 
Dozens and dozens of children have died in the same town in the same year, and you ask if it matters. The doctor had been many things since arriving in this place. Intrigued, unnerved, dismayed, but now he was angry. In a moment he cooled himself. Unmoved, he scanned Lily's every inch. What if there are children still living here? What if whatever's happened to all of these poor souls could still happen to them? And you think we should what? Turn around and leave? Chalk it up to a bad day at the office and be on our way? The doctor had finished his frighteningly calm interrogation. Lily moved a wisp of hair away from her face. Her head dipped. No, of, of course not. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. The doctor was stoic. She could see he was thinking. He was always thinking, with those wonderfully wise eyes. And yet, he didn't speak. Come on, he eventually began. I think we've trodden softly for long enough. The doctor's voice was faint as he walked back into the town. Lily followed, with a restless stomach and a heavy head. He didn't look back once. That'll be the doctor, Lily thought, watching the men of the town, young and old, slowly filter out of their houses and head towards the source of the noise, a look of concern and confusion on every one of their faces. The doctor had given Lily only one instruction, and he'd made it very clear. Whatever he was doing, she was to stay outside and well away. She silently stood between two houses, obscured by the dark. With the doctor's antics and the blackness of night, Lily was almost certain that she would go unnoticed until he had done whatever he intended to do. Except, someone was watching her. Light from some distant torch or fire illuminated the houses in front of her just enough so that she could see someone was absolutely, definitely watching. The figure was only in Lily's peripheral vision, but she was certain it was looking straight at her. She turned her head to face her admirer, and they scuttled away, retreating further into their house. She'd gotten a glimpse, however, and she could have sworn that it was a child, a little girl. After some thought, Lily began her pursuit. Hello everyone, come in, come in. The doctor was standing at the back of a rather cosy church, although he postulated that it might have looked a little prettier under different circumstances. The townsmen spilled into the church, fronted by the sunken old man who'd, regrettably, already made the doctor's acquaintance. Now, the doctor began, throwing his palms up as if it might stop the twenty, thirty, forty men that stood before him. I know you told me to leave earlier, but I think we've gotten off on the wrong foot. As I said before, I'm the doctor, and I'm quite good at helping. That's what you need, isn't it? Help. I've told you already, the man interjected. I am not giving you another warning. All right, you don't like strangers, I get that. Whatever's happened here has made you very, very scared, and that's okay. But it hasn't gone away, has it? The thing that took your children. Well, you wouldn't still be cooped up in your houses all day. Whatever it is, whatever or whoever's done this, whatever happened to your children, I might be able to stop it from happening again. Do you still have children here? Is that why you're all staying in your homes? To protect whoever's left? But if you're, if you're guarding the town, then, then why no defences? Is that why you're all staying in your homes? To, to, to protect whoever's left? But if you're guarding the town, then why no defences? You should be breaking up windows and, and blockading roads, but you let me just waltz right in. So defences won't help. So what is it then? Some kind of disease? A, a plague? A famine? Come on, why is no one answering? Why are you so afraid to talk? The doctor put his hand on his hips exasperated. The townsfolk, even the man who spoke before, stood in useless silence. I can't help you unless you let me. So I'll ask you one last time. What happened to the children?
Lily crept into the house, her hands unsure as the door gently gave way. And there she was, in the corner, the one who'd been watching. Lily was right. It was the little girl. Nine, maybe ten, she thought, with bloodshot eyes and dirty clothes. She saw terror in those eyes. Please, Lily began, softly, yet causing the girl to jump a little. Don't be frightened. I'm Lily. What's your name? Lily offered her best smile. Hannah, the little girl replied. Hannah's hands were wrapped tightly around the top of a chair that acted almost as a shield, her knuckles turning whiter and whiter as they spoke. She gulped as Lily inched closer. Hello, Hannah. Me and my friend have come to help you. But there's something you've got to tell me first. Can you do that? Hannah didn't move, didn't speak. Lily moved closer, removing her earpiece and placing the torch on the ground. Hannah, said Lily, moving again so that they were an arm's length apart. Can you tell me what's happened here? Can you tell me what's happened to the children? The doctor paced restlessly back and forth as the townsfolk chatted and deliberated. He traversed the width of the church a few dozen times so far as he waited for the flock to finish their quiet debate. The doctor had battled devils and gods and monsters, but in this moment, he was faced with his greatest enemy, impatience. Right, that's it, he began, halting mid-pace. The townsman ceased speaking. Look at me, I've got no weapons, no backup, no vendetta. It couldn't be more obvious that I'm not dangerous. I'll even drop this torch if you worry about it. But you still can't decide if you want my help or not, can you? Only one person's been brave enough to speak to me all day. What's wrong with all of you? You're grieving, I get that. You're terrified, I get that too. But if I were you, and someone told me that they might be able to get my child back, even if the chances were microscopic, I wouldn't just stand there, contemplating, I'd take it. And if I thought someone was a threat to the safety of the people I love, I'd stand up and fight. Where's your fight? Where's your spirit? Someone, please, just give me something. Doctor, said a familiar voice. The Time Lord turned his head to see his companion leaning through a doorway at the back of the church. Sorry, Lily began, but you need to come with me. Still apparently frozen in indecision, the townsfolk simply watched on as the strangers slipped away into the uninviting night. Hannah, called Lily, stepping into the dimly lit house once again. I'm back. I've brought my friend. Hannah hadn't moved. Hello? I'm the doctor. I'm here to help. Her hands trembled as he gently moved closer. I've just been having a chat with the others. You see, I think something nasty's happened here, and I'm quite good at sorting nasty things out. You can ask my friend Lily here. Only problem is, no one wants to tell me anything. So, I'm wondering, could you help me, Hannah? Hannah tapped her feet in an anxious rhythm on the cold, harsh floor. The doctor gazed deep into her eyes. He saw a conflict. A nervous, frantic struggle between yeses and noes, do's and don'ts, fight and flight. Okay, how about this? I'll say something, and, and you just nod if I'm right. Can we try that? Hannah slowly nodded. Fantastic. Okay, so, the gravestones. Let's start with the gravestones. What do they tell me? The doctor asked himself. They tell me that something happened here. Sometime this year that took children. Lots of them too. But it tells me more than that. They weren't just dated this year. They were new, clean. I think all the children were all taken very recently and in a very short amount of time. Am I right? The girl nodded. But some survived. Namely, you. Or just you. Hannah nodded again, regretfully, and tightened her grip on the chair. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm truly very sorry. Can I keep going? The doctor asked, compassion in his eyes. She nodded. 
Thank you, Hannah. He paused in thought, a thousand million considerations bouncing from ear to ear at unimaginable speeds as he looked down at the floor. He looked back at Hannah. So, a few dozen children are taken in a matter of months, maybe even less. What's the obvious answer? Some natural disaster? Freak weather conditions? Famine? Thirst? No. Whatever it was, it had to be discriminatory. It had to affect no one but children. A, a disease, then. Oh, that would be very simple. But this, this is weird. It's wrong. Not one inch of this makes sense. And you're scared. You're not scared that there's a, a plague or the sky is lit up with thunder and lightning. I, I know what that face is, Hannah. I've seen it a thousand times before. You're scared like you've seen a monster. The doctor looked at Hannah with intensity as the room fell into silence. The child seemed unable to even just nod, cold sweat running from her forehead. You're not suggesting that something alien did this? That, that's exactly what I'm suggesting, the doctor impatiently replied. Is that right, Hannah? Did you see a monster? She stood motionless for a few seconds longer. It didn't help that both Lily and her peculiar friend were staring right at her. She breathed deeply and summoned some slither of strength. She nodded. Okay, the doctor replied, surprising the girl with the calmness of his response. I'm sorry, Hannah, but I'm going to have to ask you some more questions. And they're not yes or no. I can't help you or anyone in this town unless I know what I'm fighting. Hannah, I need you to tell me what you saw. Hannah looked over at Lily, with scared, trusting eyes, as if begging for an answer. Please, Hannah, the doctor can help. I've seen him save people before, he can do it again. Tell him what he needs to know. Hannah turned back to the doctor and muttered, I saw a goblin. That's good, Hannah, that's good. Can you describe it? It was too dark, and the mist. I'm sorry, she whispered in response. D don't be, you're doing brilliantly. A mist, you say? <sighs> and now we might be getting somewhere. Was there anyone else, or just this goblin? The doctor subconsciously shuffled closer. N no, I could only see him. But there were voices. Voices of others, Hannah recalled. What did they sound like, Hannah? The doctor inquired. This is absolutely vital. What did they sound like? I uh, don't know. They were not like us. They were terrible, evil. But they spoke like... Hannah's speech trailed off, as if reluctant to put her final thought to words. Yes? asked the doctor, waving his hands in encouragement. They spoke like children. Lily noticed a change in the doctor's expression. Intrigue turned quickly into realization. Reluctant realization. Tell me I'm wrong, Hannah. But the adults couldn't see it, could they? They couldn't even hear it. How could you know that? What is it, Doctor? Lily inquired, a cold, unwanted feeling descending upon her. The Earl King, he said. Is that what took the children? The Doctor nodded, unspeaking, so Lily questioned him again. What is it then? The Earl King. The King of the Fairies. At least, that's what they say, the Doctor explained. It's folklore, Danish folklore, and nothing more. Or so I believed. Goethe, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, a German writer, wrote a poem about the Earl King using the stories he'd heard. And that's the trouble with stories. You're never quite sure when they're fiction. Yeah, but what does the poem say? What are we dealing with, Doctor? Lily asked, uneasy. The father now gallops with terror half wild. He grasps in his arms the poor shuddering child. 
he reaches his courtyard with toil and with dread. The child in his arms finds he motionless, dead. <laughs>